Alright, lesson 5.3, graphing quadratic inequalities in two variables. Uh, this lesson is the natural progression from the one we just did dealing with uh, linear inequalities. Uh, we're going to use basically the same skills, only like I said, we have quadratic inequalities this time. Alright, so let's get started. Quadratic equations create a graph called a parabola. In a quadratic inequality, the solution area is either above or below the parabola. So we're going to use the exact same method that we kind of did before. You're going to go ahead and you'll graph it. Uh, this time you won't be using y equals mx plus b. You'll be using some of the skills that we used in previous units to graph uh, parabolas. But then after you do that, you're going to be using a test point, preferably 0, 0, to figure out whether you should shade above or below your uh, graph. All right, so let's get cracking here. It says uh, graph the inequality y is less than 3x squared minus 4. So what we're going to do, a little note here, is we're going to graph the corresponding function. So when I mean the corresponding function, I'm just going to graph y is equal to 3x squared minus 4 using um, what we learned in unit, uh, whatever, unit four, uh, where we used a step pattern. So that was the one that, like, if you remember for the graph, uh, y equals x squared, you go over one, up one, over two, up four, over three, up nine, and so on. Uh, and then if there's a coefficient in front, then you change it accordingly. All right. So for this one, what we see is that we have um, a vertex at zero, four. So I'll just make note of that right here. Sorry, 0, negative 4, I guess I should say. So the negative 4 comes from right here. You just move it down. And since there's nothing inside the brackets there, uh, we assume that the graph has not been moved left or right at all. Okay. So uh, in order to go ahead and graph this, I'm going to start with my vertex. So I go down here, 1, 2, 3, 4, draw my dot. And now, when I was referring to the step pattern, I'm referring to, of course, the 3 that we have right there. So since there is a 3 in front, what we're going to do is normally I would go over 1, up 1. But since there's a step pattern of 3, I'm going to go over 1, up 3 and 3 on this side. Normally I'd go over 2, up 4, but since I um, have the 3 in front, we're going to have to go up 12. So that's going to put me right up to here. Okay. So that gives me enough to sketch my graph. Note that since this is an inequality that has a, um, is just less than, uh, you're not going to use a solid line, so I'll use a dashed line right here, the dotted line. And that is my parallel. So now I need to figure out, do I want to shade inside that parabola or on the outside, basically above or below it? So again, I will use a test point to determine the shading. Whew. That's ugly. All right, so from here. Uh, it's up to you what you want to pick. Like I said, normally pick this point zero zero as long as it's not on the line. So this is going to be my test point right here. So using test point zero zero, let's go and put it into the original equation. So the original equation we would have zero is less than three times zero squared minus four. So this just simplifies to be zero is less than negative four. Well, zero isn't less than negative four. It is greater than negative four. So this would be false. Now recall, when it's false, what that means is that you shade away from the test point, basically wherever the test point is not. So since the test point is uh, inside right here, we're going to shade on the outside. So we would be shading this region, oops, this region like so. So what that means is if you picked any one of those um, points and you put it into the inequality right there, it would satisfy it. Anything inside uh, in this region right here would not. Okay. Let's try another one. Example two. This one, notice that we're kind of going backwards. What I want us to do is I want us to find the equation of this uh, beautiful little parabola that they've given us. So write an inequality to describe the uh, inequality that we have right here. 
So what I'm going to start out with uh, for this one is let's just write down all the information that we know. And then once we have all the information written down, then maybe we can um, put everything together and get ourselves uh, an equation for the inequality here. So the vertex, let's talk about that first. Do we know where the vertex is? Well, yeah, we got the vertex right here. The vertex looks like it's at 2, 4. So the vertex is at 2, 4. That's going to come down to help us in a bit. Uh, what else do we know about this thing? Well, I'm noticing that the graph is opening down. So we have two points so far. Graph opens down. And what does that tell you? That tells you that the leading coefficient in front of my x squared term will be negative. All right. Uh, let's see. Let's talk about the step pattern. Notice how it goes over 1, down 1, and then over 2, down 4, and then over 3, down 9, like so. We know that the step pattern has a coefficient of 1. Okay, And of course, since it's uh, opening down, it'll actually be negative 1. And uh, what else do we notice? Notice the line. Okay, Since we see that it has a hash line like that, we can say that the inequality is either greater than or less than. Like so. Okay. So let's go and uh, put in everything right now. Uh, into an equation, and we'll just leave the inequality out to the last. So we have y, and I'll just use equals for now. Let's start with the leading coefficient. We knew it was going to be a negative. Okay, The graph, the vertex, since it's been moved 2 to the right, remember we put in the brackets here. This is, recall, it's the y equals a onto x minus p all squared plus q. That's what we're using right here in case you've forgotten. So the x minus, um, in this part portion, what we do is since we're moving it 2 to the right, we put a minus 2 all squared. And since we're moving it up 4, we're going to put a plus 4, and like so. Okay, So that would be the equation with the exception. We have to figure out what are we going to replace that equal sign with. Well, I would just do guess and check right here. So I'm going to pick y is less than, let's say, negative x minus 2 all squared plus 4. And of course, we're going to pick a test point. So the test point that I will pick will be, I don't know, let's pick this one right here at 1, 0. So since that's in the shaded region, it should be true when you pick that test point. Okay, so let's substitute that in. When you substitute this in, we're going to have 0 is less than a negative 1 minus 2 all squared plus 4. This gives me 0 is less than negative 1 minus 2 gives you, uh, sorry, 1 minus 2 gives you negative 1. Negative 1 squared is 1. So this gives you then a negative 1 plus 4. That gives you 0 is less than 3. All right. 0 is less than 3. That's a true statement. So that means you would go and shade down there. Since they've already shaded down in that region, that means that I can highlight this and say that this is my solution. Okay. Last example. A word problem, although we're really just doing the same thing. So I find students uh, struggle with these uh, because they have a hard time kind of uh, turning this into algebra. So the only kind of tip I can really give you here is just try to take your time, uh, break it down, and uh, practice does help. Okay. Two numbers are related in this way. The sum of 2 and 3 times the square of one number is greater than or equal to 5 minus 3 times the other number. So I know that that seems kind of crazy right now. Just try and break it down step by step. So they talked about two numbers. I do know that. So let's define those numbers. Let's use a let statement here. Let x equal uh, one number. Let's let y equal another number. Okay. So let's break this down. The first part. Two numbers are related in this way. The sum of 2 and 3 times the square of one number. So let's talk about that right there. The sum of 2 and 3 times the square of not one number. So we have 2. Sum is telling me that we're adding. So we have 2 plus 3 times the square of some number. So that's the square of some number times 3. So that's that side of the equation. Now the next part right here is they tell you that it is greater than or equal to. So greater than or equal to, I'm going to use the greater than or equal to sign. Next thing that we have is we'll deal with the other side of the equation. It says 5 minus 3 times the other number. So 5 minus 3 times the other number. Well, I have 5 minus 3 times the other number. So since I used x, this time I will use y. Okay. So from here, it's just a matter of us going ahead and simplifying this and solving it for y. So we always want to isolate for y. 
From here, what I'll do is I'll first gather some like terms. I notice that the 2 and the 5, I can subtract those. So that's gone. I now have 3x squared is greater than or equal to 3 minus 3y. Now I'm going to go and get the y onto the left side of the equation. This will give me positive 3y, and I'll move this over here. So I have 3y is greater than or equal to negative 3x squared plus 3. To isolate the y now, I'll notice that I can divide both sides by 3. And this works quite nicely. We get y is greater than or equal to. The sign does not switch here because you're not divided by a negative. We get negative x squared plus 1. Okay. So now I can go ahead and I'll graph this. Once I've finished graphing it, I'll go and get my test point and see where I shade. So I have my y-intercept is 1 right here. The graph has a leading coefficient of a negative, so it's opening downwards. So we go over 1, down 1, like so. Over 2, down 1, 2, 3, 4. Over 1, 2, 3, and down 9. So that'll take us to here and here. And since it is uh, greater than or equal to, we can put in a solid line like so. Try the best that you can. Okay, and now we have to figure out do we shade above or below this thing. So the test point I will use, this one actually does work nicely here. You can use this point as your test point. So my test point will be 0, 0. So, using that test point, I'll go back to my original equation. The original equation, FYI, was right up here. So we have 2 plus 3 times 0 all squared is greater than or equal to 5 minus 3 times 0. This gives me 2 is greater than or equal to 5. That is false. Okay. Since it is false, that tells me that I'm going to shade away from my uh, line right here. So I end up getting this part as my shaded region. Okay. Now one thing I want to point out is some people ask, well, can I just put it into this equation that you have right here? Yeah, you could go and put it into there and you still would have gotten the same thing that you would have gotten a uh, false solution. You would have had 0 is greater than or equal to 1. Um, that's no big deal. Okay. I like to put into my original equation, that's why I use this one up here, because uh, I know for a fact that that was the equation that was given and I haven't made it any errors in, in this stage. Okay. Uh, from here, B says use the graph to list a pair of integer values for the two numbers. So there's many, many different solutions that you could pick. You can basically pick anything in that blue region. So uh, one word pair you might pick would be, I don't know, let's do it in red right here. You could pick this one right at 2, 2. So I'll pick 2, 2, but I want you to note that there are many solutions. Okay, that concludes this lesson. Very similar to what you learned in 5.2, only this time we're dealing with quadratic.